Welcome to part four of my five-part series, where I compare the five U.S. companies approved by the DOD. This week, Fandy's Robotics. Vantage Robotics. So what's their story? Well, first of all, their offering to the DOD is something called the Vesper. They've been in business for somewhere over seven years, started by a group of Stanford and Yale-trained engineers. They're based in San Leandro, California. Now, the first drone they came out with was something called the Snap and had some really unique design features. And I'll get to those in a minute. And as usual, I won't be actually reviewing the drone since there's very few in existence right now. I'll talk more about the specs and the applications for it. What most impressed me was their website. It had far more information than any of the other manufacturers and allowed me to get a real feel for what this drone was all about. And I'll tell you, spoiler alert, this may be my favorite. Like the others, the Vesper is considered to be a tactical quadcopter. It's foldable just like the others, but it's pretty unique. When it folds up, it slides into a small rectangular tube, much more portable than some of the others. Last week, I raved about the modularity of the teal, but I think this one goes one step further, and that's part of the original design in the snap. Not only can you replace parts quickly on it, it's got two rotor assemblies, one for reconnaissance and one that's shrouded for indoor kind of operations. And the way that thing attaches is magnetically to the fuselage. You can pop one off and pop another one on in just seconds. So you can go from reconnaissance, open bladed props, to a shrouded one com and completely enclosed so you can fly indoors. Pretty great design, I think. There are two types of batteries, one for endurance and one coming out in the future for illuminated situations. It takes less than 90 seconds to set up, weighs about 2.2 pounds, has a 4K camera setting, can zoom up to 18 times combined optical and digital. Considering the thermal camera, it's a vanadium oxide thermal sensor. I'm not sure how that relates to the FLIR offerings and the others. That's the only information they had on it. High build quality, IP53 rated. For flight time, it's up to 50 minutes with the recon rotor assembly on it and roughly 32 minutes with the shrouded assembly. It's got a 45 mile an hour top speed, range is about five miles, near noiseless in operations, can operate in GPS denied situations. If you look at obstacle avoidance, it has downward facing sonar and in the future will have both front and rear obstacle avoidance. The cost is pretty interesting. $7,700, but what that gets you is an endurance battery, a stealth battery, the recon prop assembly, and the shrouded assembly. So it may be a better deal than any of the others we've looked at so far. Now use cases are going to be similar to the others we've already reviewed. Search and rescue, military, law enforcement, building inspection, tower inspection, power line inspection solar panels, fire, public safety, worksite inspection, wildlife monitoring, and of course, I always have to throw in the volcanoes, right? How does this one compare to the others we've reviewed so far? Well, let's take a look. Parrot weighs about a pound. The FLIR, four pounds. The TEAL, two pounds. Same ballpark, right? As far as zoom capabilities, the Parrot, it's a 4K 32 times zoom. The FLIR was a 720p, 40 times zoom, and the TEAL was a 4K zoom. The thermal sensors, all FLIR bosons. Only the FLIR had a laser rangefinder. They all had similar IP53 kind of ratings. Flight times were all in the 32 to 35 minute range, except for the models that had the endurance range of 50 minutes. The Teal and the Vesper were the fastest, the Teal being 50 plus, and the Vesper about 45 miles an hour. Range of operation from 1.8 to 5 miles. Sustained winds in the 30 mile an hour range. None of them had geofencing issues. Obstacle avoidance varied between them. And cost, that's the biggie. If we looked at Parrot, it was $7,000. 
The FLIR was 15,000, TEAL was 12,000, and now we're at 7,700 on the Vesper. But boy, you get a lot for your money there. So would something like the Vesper fit into your workflow? I think there's a better possibility on this. It's very versatile. It's not that much money when you look at what it provides. And I think if I were spending my own money, this might be one I'd choose. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got something from it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe down below. And if you'd like to share with your friends, please do so. That would be greatly appreciated. And if you've got a video you'd like to submit to me for me to include in a future video, please do so. I'd be happy to do it. And as always, thank you for watching.